What's up guys? Welcome back to Fisher Hex. Appreciate you stopping in. Today's video we're going to be doing a bi-weekly water change on the 125 gallon reef tank. I'm going to discuss a couple methods that I've just started to try out regarding micro bubbles, not only to clean the reef tank during the water change, but to clean it on a daily basis. And then finally we're going to be cleaning the filter socks for the first time in six months. So let's go ahead and get into it. As with every water change, I go ahead and I start off by cleaning the glass with a razor. Now I officially stopped cleaning the back of the tank because my blue Linkia starfish spends the majority of the day back there. And I feel that's what's keeping him alive and growing. And basically, if you guys know anything about these starfish, they don't really do well in aquariums. They tend to die off very quickly because they starve to death. Now I've had him for about six months. He has definitely grown over that time and I just want to not mess with a good thing and I'm going to have to deal with the looks of the back glass being dirty. I, I personally don't like it, but if it's what it takes to keep him alive and healthy, then it's just something I'm going to deal with from now on. Once I get done scraping the glass, it's time to turn off the main pump, the skimmer, and the power heads. Kind of let the tank settle down. Basically over the last couple weeks there are going to be uh, pockets of detritus built up in specific areas of the tank. It really doesn't matter how many power heads you have or how many surge modes you have. There's going to be dead areas or flow where detritus builds up. That's just how it is. Now because I have a bare bottom tank it's particularly easy to clean. I just go ahead and take the siphoning hose, grab in uh, a five gallon bucket and I just go ahead and I suck out as much of that detritus as I possibly can getting the majority of it out uh, before I go ahead and I start blasting the rocks with the power heads. Once that's done, I go ahead and I turn on the four power heads to 100%. That is two WP40s and two PP8s from JVO. Basically what I do, guys, I just direct the flow towards the rock structures themselves. A lot of people like to use turkey basters while they're doing their water change. Just think of this as a giant turkey baster. Um, I tend to get better results than using a turkey baster. And what it really does is it, it just kind of blasts the colonies. It gets to the detritus that might be in between the bird's nest and underneath the monties. And gets all that detritus that's underneath the rock structure as well. And it pretty much puts it into the water column. Not only where it can be picked up by the filter socks, which, by the way, I use two to three filter socks during a water change. That's how much detritus is kind of floating around there and then I also can siphon out the rest of it or the majority of it anyways during the uh, the rest of the water change. As you guys can see, I'm using the power heads to inject micro bubbles into the reef tank, and then I direct that flow at the rock structures and coral colonies themselves. Now, you might be asking yourself, why the heck am I doing something like that? Now, I have an in-depth video coming out here in the next couple days on how to implement micro bubbles, the benefits of them for a reef tank, and all that good stuff. So that video will be coming out soon, so look forward to that. But to sum everything up, micro bubbles are used to uh, clean coral, particularly acroporas, and to pick up detritus from the reef tank. Uh, the whole concept is uh, you inject micro bubbles into the reef tank. The micro bubbles themselves attach themselves to the mucous membrane of acropora, to detritus, to rock structures, to uh, uh, algae, all that kind of stuff. And then what it does is it pretty much essentially lifts it up, brings it to the surface of the water, which then it can be mechanically filtered out through your filter socks. Now I have been doing this on a daily basis via the apex for the last two weeks. And I have seen a great increase in how often I have to clean my filter socks. Before it was every three days, and now it's literally every day they overflow, which indicates I'm definitely picking up more detritus and clogging the filter socks. But that video will be out, like I said, in the next couple of days, going to great detail on how you can implement that on your reef tank if you so choose. Now with that said and done, let's go ahead and move on to cleaning the filter socks. As you guys can see, I have a ton of them here in this brute trash can. Now I just got sick of cleaning them on a monthly basis. It just got really old. I didn't want to deal with it. Um, call me lazy, who cares? Basically what I did guys is Joanne Fabric had a huge uh, felt uh, fabric sale a few months ago. So I just made like 200 of them, knocked it out in a couple days, just got it done. And I'm thankful that I did. Basically what I'm doing guys, I'm changing them out every day, every other day or so. And then I put them in um, outside in a five gallon bucket, put cover on it and let them sit until pretty much all of them are used up. Now once that's done, I go ahead and I take those buckets, I put them in this big 20 gallon uh, container, and then I just let it sit in hot water and bleach for a couple days, kind of breaking up all that nastiness, and then uh, do a couple rinse cycles with that. Once that is done, I go ahead and I add them to my washer with uh, more bleach and hot water. I let it do a couple clean cycles on heavy, uh, at least a heavy load or so, and then uh, I rinse it a few times, get all that bleach smell out, and then of course dry them in the dryer, and they're good to go. I'm definitely thankful that I uh, have that many filter socks because it just got to the point where I couldn't stand cleaning them so often. And I'm a big fan of filter socks. I know a lot of people don't like them because they're so-called nitrate factories, but I've been using them successfully for years, and um, I don't see any reason not to, to be honest with you, especially now that I'm implementing those micro bubbles. Uh, they are key to my success. All right, the last thing I want to talk about is how I'm doing water changes now. As you guys can see, I have the uh, PVC little uh, doodad shingding that's hanging over the side of the reef tank there with the ball valve. Now, this is attached to 
uh, two 45 gallon drums that are in the other room, which then are again connected to the RLDI filter. Uh, basically, I am using this now with a 50 foot hose to do water changes on every single tank in the house, uh, no matter where it's at. I have plenty of hose and it really helps not only with doing the water changes, but filling up auto top off containers. Uh, since I'm using the 20 gallon auto top off container on the main display, uh, obviously I can't carry that around. So uh, using a hose with this fitting and uh, the controllability of the flow is definitely awesome and it makes life a lot easier when it comes to doing water changes. So if you haven't uh, made one of these things, uh, I suggest you go ahead and do it. If you guys want to see an in-depth video on how I do all my water change setup in my uh, RODI containers and all that stuff, let me know. I'll do that. But uh, keep it simple. Uh, make the PVC adapter, put a ball valve on it, attach a hose and a pump and make life easy when it comes to doing water changes. Well, guys, that's about it for this video. If you have any questions, you can go ahead and put them in the comment section below, or you can contact me directly on the Fish Effects Facebook page or our uh, Building a Successful Reef Facebook page, uh, pretty much designated for subscribers um, on this channel. Either way, guys, if you like the video, give me a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe for more, and I'll see you next time. Peace.